hi guys welcome back to my channel in today's video i'll be showing you how to cut a female trouser i'll be using free hand to cut this trouser i won't be making use of pattern so we'll be cutting directly on fabric the method of cutting i want to show you will work for all sizes so stay tuned and let's get started this is the fabric i'll be using for this trouser i have about two yards of fabric here and i also have my zip this trouser has a zipper fly in front so i'll be showing you how to sew a zipper fly the measurements you'll be needing for this trouser are the waist measurements the hip measurement the round tie measurement the round knee measurement and also the ankle measurements where you want your trouser to stop another measurement you'll be needing is from the waistline to the knee line and also you'll be needing the full length of the trouser i'll set that aside now and we'll start marking first thing i want to do here is to mark one inch from the top of the fabric here my fabric is folded into two i marked one inch from the top down to the bottom of the fabric then i'll rule a line across the top of the fabric and that will be the starting line the starting line will serve as the waistline the next thing i'll do now is to divide the hip measurement the hip i'm working with is 40 inches 40 inches divided by 4 is 10. i'll go ahead and mark 10 inches from the waistline and i'll connect it with a ruler that line will serve as the crotch line so whatever your hip measurement is divide it by 4 and come down from the waistline and mark it and that line will serve as the crotch line from that crotch line i'll go up by 2.5 inches and i'll connect it with a ruler and that line will serve as the hip line the next thing I'll mark now is from the waist to the knee line. Take that measurement on your client or on yourself and whatever you get, you mark it from the waistline. So I'm marking the knee line now. For me, my knee line is 23 inches from the waistline and that is what I marked here. The next thing I'll mark now is the full length of the trouser. The full length of my trouser is 40 inches and I'm marking it there. After marking the full length, I'll go ahead and add 2 inches allowance for the trouser. 2 inches allowance for aiming. On the crotch line, I'll go ahead and mark the round time measurement divided by 2. I'm placing my tape from that starting point. That is where I will mark it. And after marking, I'll divide whatever I have there by two. And that line, I'll connect it straight down to the M. Whatever measurement I'll be taking now, I'll be dividing it in between the line I have. On the hip line, I'll go in with the hip measurements divided by four. And I'll mark it there. I'll extend that hip measurement up to the waistline and I'll connect with a ruler. To form the crotch, I'll place my curved ruler from the waistline. I'll make sure that from the waistline, I connect it up onto the tie measurements we marked out earlier. The next thing is to go in with the waist measurements. The waist measurement divided by 4. Only the hip measurement and the waist measurement will be divided by 4. Every other measurement will be divided by 2. Every other measurement like the tie measurements, the round knee measurements and the ankle measurements will be divided by 2. To mark the waist measurement, place your tape at the start of the crotch line on the waistline and mark it. So whatever you get, you mark it there and you connect it back to the hip line. I added 1 inch for that to the waist measurement. The next thing I want to mark now is the round knee measurement. You divide whatever you have into 2 and you mark it on both sides of the line. For instance, if your round knee measurement is 16 inches, 16 inches divided by 2 is 8. Go ahead and share that 8 inches in between the lines. That means you'll be marking 4 inches on both sides of the line. Go ahead and do the same thing at the ankle line too. Divide your ankle measurement by 2, whatever you have. You share it into 2 in between the lines and go ahead and connect all your lines together. So that there won't be any folding at the front of the trouser. I'll come down by 1.5 inches and I'll connect with my curved ruler back into the waistline. I'll cut out now but I'll still maintain the former line we 
we have on the waistline before i came down by 1.5 inches because i'll be using this front to cut out the back i don't want you to get confused when we are cutting out the back so i'll still maintain the first waistline we add then after cutting out the back i'll trim out that excess from the 1.5 inches please take note that i did not add any allowance to this front all the allowances i'll be adding will be on the back To cut out the back, place the front on another fabric that is folded into two and start by extending the line you have on the crotch line and also on the knee line and also on the waist line. Extend it to the new fabric you have. After extending the line, I'll go up from the waistline by one inch. I'll be adding allowance to the back of the trouser. The first allowance I'm adding is on the waistline. I'm adding 3.5 inches. And i'll connect it with a straight ruler up to that point i extended it out by 3.5 inches the next allowance i want to add is on the crotch line i'll extend the crotch line by 2.5 you can decide to extend that crotch line by 3 inches too 3 inches is fine 2.5 inches is also fine the 3.5 inches we added to the waistline that is inclusive Remember that we added that allowance to the front of the trouser. So the 3.5 inches we are also extending the back width. That allowance is also included and ease is also included. So on the crotch line, I came out by 2.5 inches. Like I said earlier, you can do 3 inches. I'm connecting those two points together now to form the back crotch. On the knee line, I'll come out by 2 inches. You can also come out by 2.5 inches. And also at the end, I'll come out by 2 inches and I'll connect those points together. We are done with the back of the trouser now. The next thing is to cut it out. The first thing I'm cutting out is the 1.5 inches I came down from the waistline on the front of the trouser i explained to you earlier that it is after cutting out the back of the trouser that i'll cut out that part this is what we have for both the front and the back and the first thing I'm doing here is to get the midpoint for both the front and the back because I want to mark out the darts. For the front of the trouser, the dart length will be 5 inches. So I'll take in half inch dart on fold. That means I'm taking in 1 inch. Then the length of the front dart will be 5 inches. I'll take in half inch on fold. That means I'm taking in 1 inch. For the back, the length of the dart will be 7 inches. I'll go over to the sewing machine to stitch the darts and I'll bring it back and show you what to do next. This is after stitching the darts and this is what we have. The next thing I want to do now is to fix the zipper fly in front of the trouser. For the zipper fly, I went ahead to cut out these two pieces of fabric and I added interfacing to it. The length of the fabric is 8 inches while the width is 2 inches. You can decide to make the length longer like 9 inches depending on the length of the zip you want in front. And you can also make the width 2.5 inches or 2 inches. Mine is 8 inches in length and 2 inches width. I placed one piece of the zipper fly on my fabric and from where it stopped I came up by 1 inch. From that point, I'll mark it up to the end. That is where I'll go ahead and stitch now. This is after stitching and this is what we have. I'll go ahead and open it up now and I'll press it. I have to iron that part in place and I'll fold in the remaining excess we have at the top with the iron. I stitch like half inch. So I'm going to be, I'll go ahead and fold the top part with half inch also.
thing I want to do now is to place one piece of the zipper fly on the left side of the trouser. I'll place it on the left side of the trouser, right side facing each other and I'll go ahead and stitch. From where I stopped my stitch on the trouser, I'll continue it on the zipper fly and stitch it in place. I'll go ahead and do that now and I'll bring it back and show you. This is after I was done stitching. I don't know if you can see my stitch there, but this is after I was done. And the next thing I'll do now is to go ahead and iron that zipper fly. I want to iron it first. The next thing I'll do now is to place my zip on the trouser. The part of the zipper fly I ironed now I'll place my zip on it and I'll make sure it is covering the teeth of the zip. So make sure that it's covering the teeth of the zip, that the teeth of the zip is not showing. After placing it exactly the way I want it, I'll go ahead and pin. But while pinning, I'm only pinning the zipper fly to the zip. I am not pinning the trouser together with it. Please watch closely what I'm doing so that you can get it. I am not pinning the trouser. I am not pinning the trouser together with the zip. I am only pinning the zipper fly with the zip. Make sure that the zipper fly is covering the teeth of the zip. It is not showing outside. Please come down by half inch while placing your zip because I'll be attaching band to this trouser. Let your zip start half inch away from the top of the trouser. After pinning that down, I'll go ahead and pin the other side of the zip to the trouser. In case you might want to get confused on this part, you can go ahead and stitch the first one in place before moving on to the second part. So the next thing I'll do now is to place that is to place my zip. I'll pin my zip to the other side of the trouser. I'll pin the zip to the other side of the trouser like you see me doing. Once I'm done pinning, I'll place the other piece on the zip like this. Make sure that the side of the first piece aligns with the second piece and you are pinning it to the other side of the zip. When you open it up, it should look like this. This is how you know that you got it right. I'll go ahead and stitch it in place both sides together with the zip and I'll bring it back and show you. Like I said earlier, before putting the last piece, you can go ahead and stitch the zip first before using the last piece to cover it so that you don't get confused. You can remove this last piece and stitch the zip in place first before putting it and stitching on it. This is it after I was done stitching and this is what yours should be looking like now. I'm cutting out the excess zip and I'll open it up so that you can see what we have. This is how yours should be looking like too. And the next thing I want to do now is to top stitch on the zipper fly. What you have to do is to pin that part you'll be top stitching on. Pin it together so that it doesn't shift away. You have to pin it. After pinning, then you go ahead and follow the shape you have at the back. You follow that shape and top stitch on the front part. Just like you see me marking now. I am done putting the stitch on the front now. I don't know if you can see my stitch. 
but this is what it is looking like to finish the zip part now go ahead and pick the two pieces together with the zip and we are going to run a stitch there to close it just run a stitch there like that and that will be all on the zip Moving on to the back now, go ahead and stitch the back crotch with half inch allowance. Go ahead and stitch it. And this is after I was done. I went ahead to place the front and the back together and I stitched the bottom part of the trouser in place. I used half inch seam allowance to stitch the bottom part of both the front and the back together. And this is what we have. The next thing now is to stitch the sides of the trouser. But you have to cross check your allowance before you join the sides of the trouser together so just fold in the back close to the front piece like that and mark your waist measurement from the midpoint make sure that your waist measurement is correct and whatever allowance you have you are going to stitch it do the same thing for both the hip the knee line and the aim I'll go ahead and stitch the sides in place now and i'll bring it back and show you guys i lost the clip where i cut out the band and where i showed you how to fix the band to the trouser so sorry i couldn't show you that part but the band width is 1.5 inches and i attached it to the waist of the trouser and this is what we have the odd the part on the zipper fly you can either put hook and eye or you put a button hole and fix a button to it but this is the finished look of the trouser I also went ahead to fold the down part with the 2 inches allowance I left there. And guys, this is all on this trouser. Thank you guys for watching. Please click the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel. Please turn on your notification bell so that you can get notified whenever I upload a new video. Please follow me on Instagram at stitchedbyst. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.